Recently qualified to be certified fraud examiner with the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners and currently assistant manager at the investigation business unit in Pretoria. She's uh, also on various uh, Saiga regional, she's on a Saiga regional committee as well as serves within the Women's Forum Committee, Ethics Committee, and Employment Equity Committee. Tabam Mulapo is a qualified registered government auditor who has worked for the South African Auditor General for six and a half years, performing audits in the public sector. He completed his BCom in uh, financial accounting, as well as postgraduate diploma specializing in public sector accounting at UCT. Currently assistant manager technical for the AXA reporting and methodology unit and serves, serves on the SIGA council responsible primarily for the SIGA examination board. His other interests lie in the fields of academia, education and curriculum development. And under this Molapo has previously occupied the role of advisor, public sector specialist and examiner at the, uni at the UCT's college accounting. And in that role, Molapo was responsible for the integration of public sector knowledge into the undergraduate accounting program syllabus, as well as for setting and providing input into exams for the flagship postgraduate diploma in public sector accounting program. Now, the topic, as we said, is the power of branding, restoring the pride of a registered government auditor. This year, 2022, marks 34 years since the inception of the Southern African Institute of Government Auditors, SAIGA, which exists to serve the public sector and society by advancing public accountability and auditing in its widest sense. As a professional body, SAIGA represents a unique brand of professionals, the Registered Government Auditor, RGA. The RGA is considered the highest professional designation in the public sector auditing and accounting space. And RGAs occupy many various capacities in the public sector, both locally and internationally and in academia. But we will probe these issues <laughs> in our discussion. So without further ado, let me start with you, Duane von Rensburg. You've been a SAIGA member for years. And uh, just to help us navigate our way through what SAIGA is all about, just share with us the journey that the organization has walked since its inception, from your point of view. Thank you, Mr. Medisha. Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, I'm going to share a bit of history with you, where, from where we came to where we currently find ourselves. In 1988, Saiga was, de was in, uh, developed basically through the AGSA, because the AGSA wanted its own professional staff membership um, because there were no other entity or institution that could grant us a professional membership. <coughs> However, for the years 1988 to 1999, the institute basically stood still and nothing happened in the institute. All you needed to do is pay your annual fees, and then you were a member of SAIGA. That was easy. I was one of those people. <laughs> so you didn't need to write the exam in those days. It was, although you needed to have a qualification, you didn't need to do an um, internship, and you didn't need to write a qualifying exam. When 2000 came, the SAIGA itself said that it must start developing a professional qualifications for the RGAs in order for the RGAs to be an esteemed auditing institution in South Africa for the public sector. Then in 2003, the office basically being the AGSA, the office, basically accepted the RGAs as being a professional qualification and started with article schemes for these individuals. In 2010, 
we, we were approximately 400 members in the AGSA, and it was the largest professional trained staff members within the AGSA. In those days, there weren't many ISA members, sidecar members, and so forth, like there is today. So the overall role of a professional body is to facilitate the professional needs and interests of its members. And that is basically what Saiga has become. A professional institution developing individuals for the public sector by presenting due courses that are needed to be passed, <coughs> exams to be written, and then ultimately achieving the designation of RGA. But more on that will be shared with, by Tabang. Then individuals holding the RGA qualification are some of the most appropriately trained professional, professionals for financial posts in the public sector because, they, because of their academic qualification and the practical training that they un underwent at the AGSA. Um, yeah, if I can start. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Duan. Now, this matter of professionalization of the South African public sector remains a topical one and the priority one of the medium term strategic framework is apparently part of the plan to achieve the NDP goals. And it also speaks to building a capable, ethical, and developmental state, state in order to underpin all other, the, all other MTSF priorities. Well, in 2021, the Minister for the Public Service and Administration, Senzo Mkunu, appointed a task team to assist government through the National School of Government to finalize the national implementation <coughs> framework that is towards the professionalization of the public service. And the work of the task team has since been completed with recommendations to the minister. Now, Tabang Mulapo, you are involved in the Saiga Examination Board. Please give me the context, or rather help our delegates here, of Saiga's product offering and its quality and rigorousness, and how this is seeking to address this overarching MTSF priority. Um. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mudise. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? <laughs> are you Are you there? <laughs> um, I hope you are here. Um, we haven't been engaging with you a lot, um, but the intention of this part of the session is really to share our heart with you. Our heart is Saiga, the work that we do, what our product is, um, and why we exist. Um, and I hope you heard when Mr. Mudise spoke initially, he spoke about, you know, we are... Uh, a unique brand of professionals. You know, we seek to make a difference in the public sector to enhance accountability. Duane spoke about the journey that we walked of professionalization. So a lot of what we'll be sharing in this session will be things that you already know. But I'm gonna ask that you listen with a different ear to um, take for yourself and be affirmed, particularly if you're an RGA, because that is the intention of this platform, to affirm you remind you what you offer to the world and what you offer to the profession so that you go out there a bit more charged, you know, um, stepping up to the mark as per the, you know, the, the, the theme. So keep that in mind as we share some of these things that you are really familiar with. Um, and thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Tim. So indeed, I do work with the examination board. So in my work as the, the <sighs> in my work as the board member or the council member responsible for the examination board, we take care of the exams at SAIGA. We make sure that the exams are at the right quality, the right standard, and that when you go out there, people cannot question you know, the sort of knowledge that you have and the exposure that you've had. And again, I'm gonna repeat things that you know, um, just so you can remember today, you know, what you hold with you when you say you're an RGA. So you asked about the MTSF and its contribution to um, the NDP. And we know about the NDP, which is the long-term strategic goal of government. You know, they have certain goals that they want to impact. And we are saying, how are we as SAIGA contributing to a developmental state that is ethical, 
uh, and that delivers for our people. And that's what I'm going to cover. So I'm going to split that into three parts. I'm going to speak about what are the governance processes of our exams and what do our exams cover that contributes to that developmental state. Okay. So quickly on the examination board, we have a committee called the examination board. They take care of the exam. So they recommend to council to say, this is the, the future of where the profession is going. This is how our exams need to look. This is the standard. This is what you need to improve. And sitting on that board or, or on that committee, we have a range of academics from the leading universities in South Africa, including the UNISAs and the universities of Western Cape. And these people sit and advise our council on the way forward, together with uh, experts in forensic auditing, accounting, as well as performance audit. The head or the chairperson of this committee is Mr. Bernard Akalas, who you would be familiar with who was part of the ERBA as the CEO for many years and has now recently been appointed to the Financial Reporting Standard Council. So why am I saying all these things? Am I name dropping? I am. <laughs> because that is to say to you, we have the heavyweights um, who wouldn't put up their own reputation for a profession or a designation that doesn't count. So you need to keep that in mind when you're out there in the world to say, Bernard is signing me off. <laughs> Bernard says I'm competent. Okay, that is what you need to take with you. Um, the purpose of the EB, as I said, is quality assurance. So let's talk about how we contribute to a capable state. What does a capable state mean? It means a state that has the capabilities to deliver. What's an ethical state? It functions within you know, an, an ethical framework. What's a developmental state? It makes a difference in the lives of the citizens. And that is the call to which we've you know, responded. The RGA syllabus covers that quite well. Remember, we have uh, a program. It's called the Government Specialism Program. Yes. It's an intense short course. It is a short course, I'll admit. But it is an intense short course that covers the following areas. And you would know public sector regulatory frameworks, PFMA, MFMA, related regulations, the PAA that governs the work of the Auditor General, governance principles from King 4. Then we speak about ethics. Remember the ethical state? We cover the ethics uh, element. And we talk about what is InterSci saying about professionalization of auditors? What is SIGA saying about the code of conduct? Then we cover accounting. We have the MCS, we have GRAB, and we also have IFRS. And I want to clarify about IFRS as well. We cover IFRS. And so our people are capable of being in environments where there's IFRS. Remember the difference between IFRS and GRAB is GRAB is based directly or indirectly of the IFRAS. So our coverage of the IFRAS is the differences. E.g., our revenue standards, IFRAS 15, hasn't been converted to a GRAB. There is a need for us to cover it. Once there's a GRAB equivalent, there is no need for us to cover it because they are the same, mm -hmm. right? So our people are very equipped to work in any space where this MCS where there's GRAP and where there's IFRS. And you need to remember that for yourself. In terms of auditing, our scope is wide. Financial audit, compliance audit, as well as the audit of performance information, which is not covered in the private sector scope. So you are the expert in compliance audit, in performance information audit. Then we also add a little bit of ICT audit. Then we add a little bit of forensic audit, which other professions do not do, okay? I have some exciting news from 2023. The gasp is falling away. We have a new qualification. It will be a longer qualification because the short course was an issue. This qualification will be called the Postgraduate Diploma in Public Sector Auditing. In addition to the modules that I covered earlier, it will add, it will add public financial management. So that means our people are not just perceived to be auditors. They can actually work in accounting. And that's the other thing I want to clarify, right? Mm. Our scope of uh, curriculum covers widely accounting, auditing, and now financial management, taxation, performance audit, which is value for, uh, value for money auditing, as well as strategy. So this means you can work anywhere in the public sector, whether as an auditor or an accountant. And that is something you need to keep in mind because you do have the exposure. Then remember your articles. You were required to have three years of articles with the relevant uh, um, training provider, most of us with the Auditor General. So you are equipped. You, you know your staff. You've done your three years, you know? And remember, your three years are similar in exposure to other professional bodies at the Auditor General. So you can never be less than. You have the same exposure as them. That is something to keep in mind. So I've answered you, uh, Prof. Yeah. I said capability, we are internationally sought after. We produce adequately skilled people here. We cover the ethics in our studies. 
and we continue to emphasize ethics in our CPD and our disciplinary requirements, we, we cover that. In terms of the developmental state, we need the first two, the capability, which I've demonstrated, then I've demonstrated ethics, because we need the right people uh, taking charge of the public's purse, right? We need the RGAs and the other accountants keeping safe uh, uh, the, the public purse. But because of your exposure as well to performance information, you are better placed to assist government in understanding how to measure the right things in terms of their performance management and their reporting. So that's another thing that other people do not have that you need to keep in mind, that you had exposure to because of your training and also because of your academic background that we have provided at SAIGA. So I just want you to remember that for now. <laughs> just for now. Uh, okay. You said I took long, but I needed to make a point. Thank no, you. that's fine. But at least you corrected something. You called me, you know, something else. Alien is a prof. Is it prof? <laughs> <laughs> prof. <laughs> she is. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, obviously, the, we're talking about branding here. What is what is the importance of uh, the RGA branding in relation to accountability? How will it enhance ac accountability? Okay, thank you. It's going to sound like I'm talking a lot, but we planned it out. <laughs> Please bear with me. We planned it out. I have lecture notes. Okay, uh, I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert in branding, but my colleagues will will, will pop in um, to assist me. Um, so I want to read on what is branding. And according to Kotler and Keller, branding refers to endowing um, upon products the power of a brand. And I know that doesn't help you much. But they say that branding is the process of giving meaning. At the heart of branding is giving meaning to an organization, Saiga, to a profession, the RGA, of what, um, what products we offer. And, and creating in the minds of our people, you know, to whom we, we need to report or work for, um, what our brand is about and what we offer. They say branding is a strategy, um, and it's a strategy intended to help people understand who we are, to identify and understand what experience we offer. Um, it tells people why our product is better, right? That's branding. And I want you to keep that in mind, because you'll hear later I'll speak about two levels of branding, at an institutional level and branding at an individual level. And the individual level is your part, what does branding mean about you and how do you drive it? So as I said, at an institutional level, it's about the conference. It's about Russell and team putting us on a billboard, you know, having a research wing that shows that we are capable of producing research, the technical research, having being the voice in public sector accounting and auditing, uh, being the first point of contact when it comes to all these matters in the public sector. That is the institutional level. But for me, the far more important one is the individual level that speaks to you. Because you are our marketing tool. You're probably our biggest ad spend. We spend, I don't know if we actually spend money on you, but you are actually how we spend, or how you are our ad spend, technically. You are our ambassadors, and you are likely to have a more direct impact on our key stakeholders. This being the public, the citizens that we keep talking about, as well as the institutions you know, uh, to which they work or that you engage with as part of your work. So it's important that you, we have your buy-in. Um, I just want to share a bit more about uh, some of the things that I've noticed about some of the best brands that we know, your Apple, your Coca-Cola. Um, and I hope the things that I'm going to share shortly will remind you why you need to think of yourself as an important part of the Saiga brand. Most of these brands that we know and we love have a compelling vision and a passion. And think about the fact that you have a compelling vision and a passion. According to Saiga, you are here to advance accountability in the public sector. So you, you drive that. It's, it's compelling. You're going to make a difference. Russell and team are managing the, the admin. It's you who makes the difference. It talks about being unique. Yes, the call that we are, we've accepted in the public sector, it's a great call for the benefit, not for ourselves, but for everyone else. So it's unique. It's about understanding your audience understanding that the citizens are your audience and your priority, and you're doing work on their behalf and for their betterment. It's about connecting with people on an emotional level. One of the speakers earlier spoke about, it's a human work. And the first part of our work is to be human and to remember why we're doing the work, to help better the lives of others. And reputable brands are consistent, they are reliable, and they're good quality. So what's the takeaway for me there? 
Branding is about two things. It's about facts. So what are the facts? Saiga is green. We have a great qualification. But it's also about perceptions. It's about the external perceptions. What do people say about us? What do they say about us? How do we present ourselves? Do we have the proper processes in place? But more importantly, it's about the internal perception. What do we say about ourselves? Um, what do we believe about ourselves? And I think that's the one thing I want you to leave with about branding. Don't leave it to Russell. Ask yourself, what am I doing for branding? Thanks very much. Osby Pelo, the Tualo. Ruquile, we've had more than we needed to hear. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose that's, the, that's how market works, doesn't it? <laughs> Make doubly sure that you heard what they are telling you. Okay, that's fair enough. Are there any uh, strategic initiatives within Saiga that uh, the organization is working on that you believe will play a significant role in repositioning the institution? Definitely. Um, I like earlier when Duane indicated that for a longest period of time, Saiga kept quiet. We are in the public space. We are taking back what's ours. We believe that we are public sector specialists and therefore Saiga is saying we are waking up and we're doing what people need. It's time for us to rise and the time is now. We had a privilege of having the president uh, present to us in our Limpopo Regional Committee launch. And he indicated some of the strategies that I'd like to reiterate to the people that are here um, on where Saiga is going as an organization. He indicated that we are repositioning ourselves so that we can focus both on auditing and accounting disciplines within the public sector. Because like we said, our profession or designation says registered government auditor. He indicated that while we are still working in the academia space, while we're still rebranding, while we're still on working certain things, we are building strategic partnerships that will assist SAIGA as a preferred professional body to serve the public interest. Um, we are building a capacity to broaden the public sector environment within the SADC region. Earlier, we had uh, the Excellency who was assisting us and showing us how we can broad uh, SAIGA into Africa. That is one of the things that we're also looking into so that we, are, we become international as well. We also want to bring uh, public sector financial management capacity creation into Africa. Well, what has happened when these strategic initiatives are in place? Um, we've already um, established a public sector accountancy and academy, um, audit academy that can help professionalize the public sector or people who are already in the profession. We indicated as RGA, we do have the knowledge, we do have the skill, but we go into a public sector that there is a gap. So our public sector academy offers training initiatives that can help broaden that gap. We talk about new memberships, people coming in. Tavang has covered that we would have a program where a person can specifically study towards becoming a public servant, which for me is beautiful to see. We are accrediting private firms so that they can be also they can also offer trainings uh, programs to SAIGA trainees. We have a top program with government. For example, we have an MOE with SAIGA in place. We are integrating with other professional bodies. We see that SAIPA is already here, ACFE, IIA, ICASA. SAIGA sits in Abaza Council, and there's also technical research into the accounting and auditing profession within the sector. So therefore, I can proudly say that SAIGA, where it's sitting, is going in the right direction, where we're taking back the public sector and ensuring that the citizen come first. Thank you. Thank you. Well mm -hmm. Now, Dwayne, let me ask you this question. Any thoughts from you how you think uh, members can practically demonstrate their pride in the professional designation and the professional body. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I've been a member of SAIGA for many, many years. And it's only in the past few years where SAIGA started to develop into a professional body that we could be proud of. And that, that only happened when people started putting up their hands and saying, we want to be part of changing SAIGA into a professional organization. 
Now, those members that put up their hands eventually came, became council members and other committee members. I know when Mr. Akwala took over, he modernized the whole Saiga concept. He changed it. And I, being a council member in the past, they barely recognize what Saiga has become. It's become a big animal. And that we can see by what is happening here today. There are people here that are interested to hear what we've got to say. And as in the past, people were not very or were very shy to actually put up their hand and say, I belong to Saiga and put the RJ behind their names. But that hopefully will change. And hopefully all of us that are RGA will put our names behind being an RGA. Then most of the people in the past that left SAIGA or the AGSA went to the private sector or public sector and they did that based on their qualifications and not based on the fact that they were RGAs. But this is not the somber story. I want to tell you about two people that I personally know that served with me on council and on EXCO of SAIGA. The first being Mrs. Moipone Ramoipone, the RGA, and she's qualified as an MBA. Um, Ms. Moipone was one of the first interns in the SAIGA scholarship or traineeship that was offered in the AGSA. She was in 2008, after achieving her recognition as passing a traineeship, promoted to assistant manager. Mrs. Ramo Pone in 2009 joined the National Treasury, where she became a deputy director later on. As part of her responsibility, she and other members were responsible for governance monitoring and compliance of departments, entities, and national and provincial levels. She was promoted to a director in 2012. However, as of June this year, she has been promoted to chief director for the government or governance section within the OAG's office, OAG being Office of the Accountant General. Um, then, secondly, I would like to introduce Mr. Adam Abotse, who was also a member of SAIGA, who is still a member of SAIGA, maybe not in good standing, I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he managed to become a chief director in the Department of Defense, and he works closely with the president, advising the president on matters relating to finances. So there are people, there are RGAs that are making us proud out there in the public sector. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, I'm going to ask if you want to share your thoughts or have questions for the panelists here, if you do, please indicate. Uh, okay. There's a lady here in front. Let's stop there. But in the meantime, let me ask you, Buipilo Letswalo, what uh, does being a registered government auditor mean to you? Has it been of any benefit beyond what you've shared with us? You can share with us your pay slips and <laughs> so with. I cannot, unfortunately, sir, I cannot. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to go back to the first day when I was um, employed at Auditor General to do a trainee program. And I had no idea what RGA, were, RGA was. Um, so when you get into the system, we were allocated a buddy. Now, a buddy is someone who's going to help you um, learn the jargon, do timesheets, understand what teammate is and the likes. So my buddy comes to me and says, 
um, you need to secure the bag. And then I'm like, what do you mean secure the bag? She said, you need to be an RGA so that you can be employed. I thank her to this day. I honestly thank her for giving me that advice. Um, because usually when you become a trainee, you don't know how to balance work life. Then you get overwhelmed. You don't do well academically. So she said to me, become an RGA. You're going to be employed. For me, RGA afforded me the opportunity to be employable. It is a, we take it lightly because if you look at the statistics for unemployment, especially youth, it's over 60%. So someone who's my, my same age as me is unemployed somewhere and cannot f- put food on the table. So for me, becoming a registered government auditor afforded me that. And I do not take it lightly because right now, if you look at Auditor General, there is right there for you to become an assistant manager or grow. RGA, CSA, or the others. Mm. So I do not take that lightly. What that has done for me also is that it has allowed me to work in one of the greatest chapter nine institutions with it, which is Auditor General. The opportunities that you have there, the the people that you get to meet and hold accountable, you can sit across an MEC and hold them accountable. Someone who has worked in the department has only seen them on TV. You know, I usually say to my trainees, we have so much power as auditors. If you can taste it, you'll never want to leave. But nonetheless, um, for me, um, being an auditor comes with great responsibility, but being a registered government auditor brings me joy because I'm directly involved in ensuring that our taxes are spent for, its, for the intended purpose with the sole responsibility of building a South Africa for, for its citizens. If you look at the values that we have within SAIGA, if we look at where we are going. So for me, I would like to appreciate that there's an institution such as SAIGA and I'm able to have a, a postgraduate qualification and I'm an RGA. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You've got the mic, no? Questions. Then we'll go in that order. You will speak first. You take the mic, and then he gets it. Uh, who, who didn't speak? Uh, uh, you did have a share before, so... <laughs> equity, equity, equity. We always complain about uh, inequality and all that. So let me make a contribution to reducing levels of inequality <laughs> in the country. So we'll go in that order. One, two, three, four. And then, and then we'll see what we do. But we've got 40 okay. minutes. Go ahead. Thank you very much, um, Program Director. My name is Nintanta Sibiya, um, SNA Manager in KZN. Um, Dr. Nkosa Zanazuma, yesterday, um, she gave us an assignment as um, one of um, the public sector um, uh, professions um, in terms of looking at um, the, 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 um, the local government as it is currently highly regulated. So what do you think um, are the processes that are required that to be put in place by SAGA to ensure that we provide a credible um, service or a credible product that is required um, for while we are still recognizing ourselves as rebranding. Are you gonna f- feel the yeah, I'll You've it. appointed a spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you go ahead. All right, thanks. Um, thanks, Jay. Um, and, and good afternoon, uh, panel members. Um, I, I wanted to touch a bit on, on rebranding. Um, I had one of the, the panel members speak about an MOA with Salga. I might have missed it in one of the communiques. Um, and if you can maybe uh, take me through it. What, what does that MOA entail? And from a rebranding point of view, are we looking at other partners? Um, um, from, from a trainee point of view, I think the Auditor General, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad the boss is not around. Um, <laughs> the, the Auditor General, in a way, has been failing us in terms of in terms of the numbers that they were taking in, in each year. And that 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 relationship is really not um, so sustainable in that they would take um, 10 trainees a year, whatever the number is that they take. And I don't think it will then align with, with what we want to achieve as, as as an organization or as a body. 
So um, um, what other partners are we looking at? Um, and, and specifically, considering the fact that, Mr. Mbolapo, you mentioned that um, and with the introduction of the new modules that um, uh, the, the guys were going to have to go through to get the now replaced GASP um, qualification, what other institutions are we looking at? Um, and, and if there's any talks, at what level are we um, in terms of that rebranding and that partnership to ensure that we, we infiltrate um, the public sector, uh, not only through the Auditor General, but through um, other bodies or other departments? Thanks. Thank you. I'll give you a chance as well. There's the microphone coming. Uh, thank you very much, sir. When uh, Dwayne started speaking, I thought Dwayne is still quite a youngster. <laughs> uh, I'm one of the founder members of, of SICA, and uh, something that I'm very proud about. I see Dwayne is uh, wearing his old tie today, and uh, we, we carry this uh, designation very close to our hearts. When it started out in 1988, it was a need amongst the individuals that, that created this organization, a need to be recognized as a professional, as a professional government auditor. Compared to all the other types of auditors that you get, the private sector guys, the internal audit guys, the guys focusing on IT, whatever, whatever, the need was there to be designated government auditors. And uh, through the years, we managed to carry that forward. Today's organization is in good hands. We're standing strong. And we're very, very thankful for that. One of the speakers said that uh, she need to be employed. She need to be a member to be employed. And I thought, I'm a member because I want to be. Mm. And I think that is the kind of attitude that we must look at. We must have members because they want to be members. They want to take this organization forward. Talking about rebranding. I think the youngsters are much more qualified to speak about uh, rebranding than I am. But as long as we carry this organization in our hearts, I think we're well away. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I'm going to ask the panelists to comment to all the issues that have been raised here, and uh, we will close it. And let you're back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought the spokesperson had already covered. Yeah, the spokesperson <laughs> deviated from the mandate. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, uh, uh, MC. And thanks to the panel. I think they did a great job in terms of uh, dishing out this uh, subject matter. I, I don't think anyone could have done it better. And what I like about that panel, it's, it, it, it represents the age mix that uh, one speaker mentioned yesterday that you don't have to dish out the old because they carry institutional memory. And the judge also said that you need to know where you come from. Mm. And I think Dwayne put it uh, perfectly. And by the way, I have that tie too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. In, yeah. So mine is just to say that I think the colleagues there said everything that needs to be said about where we are, what we do, where we want to go. But the challenge still rests with all of us here to say, and I'm, I'm also a guilty party there. You see CASA behind every CA's email signature and their business cards. But us, we don't put this RGA there. But in forums like this, we praise it. We say we're doing ethics, we're doing warwara. But I'm challenging all of us. We, even at council, uh, president, you'll hold me accountable. We discuss this thing to say we can... We can advertise, we can, we can spend money on conferences, but if we don't put that RGA behind our, our email signatures or business card, no one will take us serious because you're still hiding. That means you're still ashamed to be associated with RGA. So mine is just to say that we are doing a lot as council behind the scene, but until members put, myself included, I'll, I'll adjust my email signature <laughs> from tomorrow. I, I challenge everyone in this room. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I, we're now concluding, right? Uh, who do I go with? Uh, Dwayne, I think let's follow the order that we started with. You, you go first. And okay. we pillow and then... Uh, Thank you. Um, 
I just want to say, in terms of being an RGA, I'm like, like Corey. I joined the AGSA to be my path for the rest of my life. And, and I saw all the opportunities in the AGSA. And eventually, the route of becoming a SAIGA member also came my way by means of one of the founding members, Aubrey Ardendorf who forced all of us, young people in those days, to join SAIGA and to become RGAs. So, being an RGA made me eventually become an audit manager in this office in 1996, long time ago. And I had the opportunity to audit department, specifically Department of Defense, um, the special defense account. I audited public entities being Petro SA and the SEF group for a period of six years. After that, I also represented the AGSA in court hearings before the public protector for a period of two years the investigation was ongoing. Then I've had the opportunity to write speeches for a number of our AGs um, on investigations, which I was also part of during my time as being a manager and an RGA member. Then eventually I ended up in technical audit support where I am now and giving advice to all the auditors out there that, that has difficulty with compliance related matters specifically on authorized, regular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure that is so great or so big in the news today. And I just want to say, if it wasn't for this organization, I would definitely have not been able to achieve what I've achieved. Thank you. Um, to the questions that has, have been raised, we are not ghosting you. We'll send out a communications to answer them because I believe if we start touching on the nitty gritties, this conversation will probably prolong and we might spend our time here. So we would, we can also chat Kagala, you know, there's still time after this. So we will do that. Um, looking at time, um, I'd like to, to, to definitely agree with one of the final members' comments to say um, once after I became an RG, it was no longer about being employed but about what we stand for. Because if you look at the cultures and if you look at the values that we stand for in Saiga, if you read them and you read what we are about, then you become proud to be an RGA. Hence, uh, Chairperson, if you go to my email, I have RGA there. So please, <laughs> let's do the right thing. <laughs> so in my concluding remarks, looking at the conference that we've had, looking at um, rebranding and the likes, I would like to say that in my small portion to the best of my ability, I think I want to become an auditor that does not do the same thing, an auditor that does not do the same thing differently, and an auditor that does things differently. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, I'll try to be quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just need help with the slides, please, if we can move to the next slide. So I'm going to respond to the question quickly, but I won't cover it in scope. So I think it's an important question about the work that we are doing. Um, uh, Russell and his team have been w working quite hard to make sure that um, we start winning over universities by accrediting their programs. And obviously when we accredit programs, it means we now have a pool of students that can then do our postgraduate uh, degree. With regards to your question on you know, other training offices, we are accrediting private firms that are doing CWC work. But the challenge is usually with the, we have a, a, an MOA with Salga as well for local government, but we would need to set up a program. And as you can appreciate, that takes a lot of time. Um, and from uh, the perspective of, um, yeah, so that takes a little bit of time to just finalize the details. Um, let me leave it there. We can chat about it uh, outside, but uh, we're really doing a lot of work and I think we're doing a lot. Um, we have a challenge at, um, national treasury level because of the misconception that we are just auditors and that's what we're trying to manage. So um, we can chat some more about that. Colleagues, I would be amiss if I left without sharing the next three slides. I'd like to share that our council member, uh, Mr. Lucky, 
and I hope it inspires you as well, will be moving to New Zealand um, to join the Auditor General of New Zealand. There's another lady, Nozi, who's also moving um, to New Zealand. And I think that speaks to the fact that we can. Um, I, I recently had a discussion with one of the recruiting managers from New Zealand, and there is an appetite for our skill. And I think it speaks to two things, to what we know, but also where we trained. So it's not just about what we know, it's the fact that the Auditor General did invest in us, so we need to appreciate that as well. Um, he's joining the Auditor General of New Zealand, and please check out the website you can go to. Okay. <laughs> um, and then thank you, Tepo, for pointing out the thing about the emails that was on my notes, but LinkedIn as well. And it speaks about creating networks. So at the gala, let's talk to each other. Let's exchange numbers. Let's do things, man. That's what, what, what grows us. Let's participate in the regions. Okay, let's have a golf day. Regions, ask for budget and have a lunch or something. But meet, see each other. Don't just Network. wait until the conference. Meet, see each other, and get to know each other. Um, just on my concluding remarks, I'm just challenging you guys to, to you drive the brand. That's it. You, you really are the brand after all. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much, Tava. You know, listening to the presentation here and what transpired earlier on, and all the ideas that are coming through, I like to simplify things for myself sometimes when they are a bit complicated and I try and look at them in, in a sort of worldly point of view that when these guys say this, that what does it mean? And I came to the conclusion that if I were to talk to a lay person and say I, was, I attended this conference, they were talking about this and they are confused, I'll simplify, to the, simplify it to them by saying I get a sense that auditors are like the jube jubes. <laughs> <laughs> Of oh, what's going you. on. <laughs> because people tend to run away when you come. We read in the papers that when they hear that the Auditor General or the officials from the Auditor General's office are coming, information gets hidden, and things get bent up, bent down, and so on, <laughs> including uh, buildings in some instances. And I say, okay, I get it now. These are the jube jubes <laughs> of what's going on in government. Jub -jubes. So I understand. You can share it with other people who may not understand what you are <laughs> That we are the, the jub jub within government. We, <laughs> we check who's not, who's not playing according to the rules. <laughs> so uh, we're going to hear later on from uh, Mr. Morena. But before we do that, let's get a little bit of entertainment from Ramura and Son. And Sons, actually. Ramura and Sons. <laughs> <laughs> 